In this video, we are going to look at ISO, which is one way in which we can control light. Now, when we press the shutter button on the top of the camera, our goal is to record light, as that is what photography is all about. And changing the ISO on the camera gives me one way in which I can control light alongside the aperture and the shutter, which we're gonna cover in separate videos. Now ISO, aperture and shutter are often collectively referred to as the exposure triangle. And it's really important to understand how each of these three work both individually, but also as a group, as they are the foundations for all photography. Now my advice is to watch the individual videos that explain ISO, aperture and shutter, followed by the exposure triangle video that helps to explain how we pull the three things together to give us a great image. Now to understand ISO, let's start by going back in time to when we used to use film cameras. Now don't worry if you've never used a film camera before, this won't take long, but it will help you to understand how ISO works and how we can use it to our benefit when taking photos. So before digital cameras came along, we used film cameras like this Canon camera right here, and we put film in the camera like this roll of Kodak film. Now here you will see two rolls of film. The number 36 on the side tells us how many photos we can expect from the film, and the larger number on the side is the ASA rating of the film. Now this was important as it was a guide to how sensitive the film was to light. The higher the number, the more sensitive the film was to light. The lower the number, the less sensitive the film would be to light. So here is how it worked. If we were going to take photos at the beach on a bright sunny day, a film with a lower ASA would be recommended. 100 or maybe 200 ASA would be ideal. The low number of course tells us this film would be less sensitive to light, but that would be okay because there would be plenty of light at the beach, so the film would not need to be overly sensitive to light. But if you wanted to take photos maybe indoors where the light is not so good, then choosing a film with a higher ASA rating, maybe 800 ASA or possibly higher, would be better. This film would be more sensitive to light and would be a better choice considering the lower light available indoors. So in the good old days of film photography, we would choose the film that best suited the light. The film rated ASA 400 was the most popular film because it was a good all-rounder, making it ideal for bright conditions, yet still useful on dull overcast days. Now, of course, with digital cameras, we don't have to worry about film anymore as it has now been replaced by a digital sensor inside the camera. And the job of the sensor is essentially to record light, just like with film. Now, when you select the ISO function on your camera, I'm using a Nikon today, a series of numbers will be displayed on the LCD screen. And if these numbers look familiar, it's because these numbers replicate the ASA ratings on the film. Changing the ISO number enables us to make the camera sensor now more or less sensitive to light, and it works just like film. The lower the number, the less sensitive to light the sensor will be. The higher the number, the more sensitive the sensor will be to light. So if I'm heading to the beach with a digital camera like this one, I set the ISO low. And that is because here in Brisbane, it is generally nice and sunny, so the camera will not need to be overly sensitive to light. So I might choose, say, ISO 100, or maybe leave it at my preferred default ISO, which is ISO 200. Now, if I'm taking photos in low light, such as indoors, then it's likely I will select a higher ISO, which will make my camera more sensitive to light and my image brighter. So as we've learned, increasing the ISO will make the camera sensor more sensitive to light. And this can be extremely useful when shooting in poor light, such as indoors or maybe in the shade. But increasing the ISO does have a downside. When you start to push the ISO into the big numbers, you will start to notice that your photos maybe lack sharpness and start to look grainy. Now this is also known as digital noise and you can see the difference when we compare these two images. 
So what causes digital noise? Well, digital noise is effectively distortion. Let's look at it in a slightly different way. If you're listening to music at home and you crank the volume up to the max because you like a song that's just come on the radio, then the speakers may start to distort and suddenly it doesn't sound so good. Well, that of course is an audible distortion. Digital noise is effectively visible distortion that affects our images when we crank the sensitivity of the sensor up too high. So with that in mind, I would follow one simple rule and that is ISO, keep it low. I have my camera set to ISO 200, generally as a default. That way I get nice clean images with no noticeable noise. If the light is poor, the key is to see if firstly, we can improve things by adjusting maybe my aperture or shutter speed. If I cannot, then I increase the ISO. But if you have to use a higher ISO, just make sure you go up in small steps. Avoid jumping up into the big numbers where possible. So now you know all about ISO. Now remember the golden rule, ISO, keep it low, but don't be scared of using it. Increase the ISO if you have to, but only if you have to. Now in another video, I'll be explaining when you might want to increase the ISO, or maybe you will need to increase the ISO, and why when taking photos at night, we usually use the lowest ISO. Now that may feel a bit counterintuitive at first, but it will make sense when you watch the video. Now if you haven't already, I recommend watching the videos that explain the aperture and the shutter next.